Welcome! In this episode I will show you how you can create a first person, a third person and a one and a half person view for our mobile game. And here is the best part. You can actually switch between them very smoothly. For example, this is a first person mode. This is a one and a half person mode, so you can see the person on the left, uh, which is pretty good for aiming. And here is a third person mode. At first a little bit of theory. We have two main components. The first one is a pivot point. The second one is a distance. Let's have a look at the third person mode. This is our character and this is a camera. The camera is right behind the character. The pivot point in the third person mode is directly on the char character. And the distance is the distance between this pivot point and the camera itself. So this is D. And then the camera just rotates around this pivot points given the specified distance. If you have a look at the first person mode, the camera sits directly on the character's head. The pivot point is the same, but the distance in this case is zero. So the camera sits directly on the pivot point and rotates around itself X. If we have the one and a half or second or call it whatever you want um, view, we see the shoulder of the first person. So the camera is here, the pivot point is here and the camera rotates around this pivot point. And if the camera rotates, the character points uh, rotates with the camera. So you always see a bit of the shoulder, where in third person mode, you always see the whole character. And in first person mode, you do not see the character at all. But you see, these are different modes, but they are all based on the same concept. These are just, um, they differ just by the setting or assignment of the variable P and D. Let's start right away by drag and dropping our character into the scene, adding a rigid body to it, freeze the rotation X and Z, and add a capsule collider. You have to edit the collider because it's not perfect at the start, so the collider should end at the head and start directly at the feet of our characters. Then we add two scripts, a player script and a controller script. The player script is a script that can be dragged and dropped in all the characters, even if it's, if it's an enemy or a network player or something like that. It's a general class for our player. The controller defines the human interaction. So if a character has a player and a controller, it's controlled by a human. Let's start with the player. The player should have some input. So I define the input structure and define it as public. This can be set by a controller, for example, the input via the mobile input or the network or some AI uh, logic for enemies. So the input is a look direction, an X and Z value, a one direction and a Boolean if the character should jump or not. We should also add a speed. This is a default speed of the player. You can leave the const um, keyword out and you can edit this in editor or you leave it in and then you have to edit it in the code. And we need a jump force. These are the parameters for our character. If we increase it, the player will be faster. And two fields, a widget body and the look rotation. On a rake, we get the reference to the widget body. So then we are declaring the function fixed update. We're using fixed update because we are dealing with physics here and fixed update is more stable when you're dealing with physics. So we declare two variables, input run and input look. And these are directly deviated from our input field um, and the variables 1x, 1z, look x, look z. These new vectors will be clamped. So this means if this vector has a magnitude greater than one, it will be set to one. If it's lower than one, then the vector will be as it is. We will assign this value to input one and input look. So after that, we can modify the velocity. The velocity is always the input one times speed and input z times speed. 
and we just leave the velocity in the y direction as it is. This part modifies the position of our player and now we have to modify the rotation. So if there is an input from outside, so the input look vector has a magnitude greater than any very small value, then we reset the look rotation. And we get a quotidian for that so that we can just apply this rotation to our transform rotation. And it's an, made by an angle and an axis. So the axis is up vector and then it will be rotated around the input look. The input look is um, the vector that comes from the input and it's a sine angle. So we just compare the forward vector to the input look vector. We will get uh, angle out of these. We have the axis and then the quaternion is just the look rotation. The last thing we need is jump. So there's a complete video about jumping in my channel. Uh, just look it up or I will put your link in down in the description. Um, I will just shortly explain what jump is doing here. So if input jump is pressed, we have to check is the character able to jump. So the character is not able to jump in midair. So we have to check if the character is grounded. If the character is grounded, we will change the velocity. Velocity x and z will be the same because this is the velocity on the plane. But the velocity y will be instantly set to the jump force. So how do we check if our character is grounded? How to check if the player is grounded? We will cast a ray. The ray starts from the position of the character and then we go up by 0.1 values. And then we will cast the ray down by 0.2 values. Just a brief explanation. If this is our character, then this is our transform position. From this position, we add 0.11 values up. So we will be here. So the red goes down to here because the distance or the length of the ray is 0.2. And this ray is hitting the ground here. If the player is in midair, it will not go through this ground and therefore the function will return false. So we are not able to jump in midair. Now we are able to play. Our player script is ready. But there is one important step missing. The input is not directed to the player and the camera is not set yet. This is a controller CS. Let's start by getting some references. We will need the joystick, the button, the touch field and the player. And on awake, we will find these. Next up, the input rotation. So this input rotation X should be a value between zero and 360. So, and if we rotate around our own axis, this should increase from zero to 360 and directly jump back to zero and so on and so on. And if we turn around the other way, it should decrease. The X value should be between 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. And this means if we look up, we will have 90 degrees. If we look straight down, we will have minus 90 degrees. On update, we will do the following. We take the input rotation X and it will be the same value as before. And then we will ex, uh, add the touch distance on the x-axis times the rotation speed, which have to be specified. I will take the number 10. You, or as always, you can make it public and remove the const keyword to edit this in the editor window. And then we will multiply it by the fixed delta time because we are in fixed update. Oh, this is not correct. We should be in, no, this should be delta time and we will just do the modular with 360 so that we never go above 360 or below zero. Next up the input rotation y. The input rotation y is basically the same as the line above. So input rotation y 
touch distance y times rotation speed times delta time. So this is the same as above, but this time we, time we do not use the modular because we don't uh, want the same behavior. We want it to be between minus 90 and 90. I will take minus minus 88 and plus 88. Next up, we will calculate some help variables, character forward and character left. So the character forward is a forward from the point of view of the character and the same goes for left. We just take forward and rotate it by the input rotation around the up axis. And we take the same value and add 90 degrees and then we have character left. Okay, a short explanation. Let's say this is the x axis and this is the z axis. Forward is pretty simple. It's just x1, 0y, 0z. And left is pretty straightforward. Um, 0, 0, minus 1. Let's say this is our character and the character is rotated. X rotation will be 45, which means if we take the forward axis and rotate it by 45 degrees, it will be this. And this one we will call character forward. If we add another 90 degrees, we will have this vector and we will call this vector character left. So, and these will rotate when the character is rotating. If we now know what is forward and what is left, it should be pretty straightforward to get the one and the look direction. So the one direction equals the character forward. It's pretty simple. So we take the character forward and add the uh, axis vertical, for example for the keyboard, or just the joystick axis normalize Y. So if I press in the Y direction on my joystick, the character will run forward. The same goes for the horizontal axis or the X axis on the joystick. We will take character left. If I push left, this will be one and character left will be added to the one direction and the other way around. The look direction is pretty straightforward. We just take the character forward and rotate it by input rotation y about around the character left axis. So as we know, the blue one is the character forward and the red one is the character left. If we now take the left one and rotate it, the character will look up or down. We will not rotate the character, we will just rotate the view. The last step is just to pass everything we just calculated to our player input. So 1x, look x, and the jump. The jump is pretty straightforward. As soon as the jump button is pressed, we will set input jump to 2. And there we have it. We can move our character, we can turn our character, and we can jump. As you remember from the beginning, we will have two different variables, the camera pivot and the camera distance. And we will use this right now to calculate the rotation and position of the camera. In our update routine, we will uh, calculate the character pivot because the, the pivot point will be something like zero, zero, zero. And we have to translate it to the um, character pivot. So it takes a camera pivot and rotate it around our up axis with the input rotation x. And then we will call a routine called set camera with our calculated look direction and our calculated character pivot. And this is what set camera should look like. So because we are starting a routine, we have to use the IN numerator as a return value, then the name of the method, and we will pass the look rotation and the character pivot to it. And the first thing we do is we yield return new wait for fixed update. So if you do not do this this way and you just copy and paste this code here and everything is fine, you will see that it won't work so good because here we are an update and this is way more often code than the player uh, fixed update. 
and this means that you will have some strange effects to it. So we wait until the fixed update is ready and then we will set the camera main transform position and rotation. In your scene make sure that the main camera has the tag main camera otherwise the code, word, the code won't work. So the camera position is the transform position plus the character pivot minus the look direction times the camera distance. So this means this is a character transform. This could be the pivot vector. So we will be here. The look direction is there and we will subtract it with the camera distance. So the camera will be here, for example. And then you will see the shoulder of the character and the rest of the view. Let's see what we got. It looks pretty strange. So I can kind of move and kind of look, but the thing is we didn't set the pivot or the distance. So we remember for the first person controller, the pivot should be some kind of right and the distance should be zero, but we should be a little bit higher, for example, directly in the head. So let's try different settings. We just changed the camera pivot to 0 0.9, 1.4, and maybe the distance to one, set to zero. And there we go. We see one shoulder of the character. This is good for aiming, for example, or have an intense moment with the game. Uh, we can also jump, and this is working fine as well. So the last one is a third person controller. It's zero to zero, and maybe a camera distance of three. And then you have a third person view. You can change whatever you want, for example, the distance or the pivot height, or maybe you want to go a little bit left or a little bit right. So you can do whatever you want with it. So there is a camera setting for everyone. Everything is working. And that's it for this part. So we have a first person, third person. We have everything you need. And the next step will be the animation for the jump and the walk. Uh, we will cover this up in the next tutorial. So make sure to subscribe and have a look at the playlist below. This is a playlist of this complete scene, how I create it. And you also fit the, uh, find the GitHub repository in the link description. And there you can just have a look at all the commits I have done. There's one specific commit that is tagged with this episode and you can just pull it and have the exact same version on your PC. So bye.